Welcome to Well Crafted Studio. I'm here to help you live inspired and create with purpose. So let's get started. So today's tutorial is how to engrave cheese servers with your Cricut Maker. In my other videos on engraving with your Cricut Maker's engraving tool, I've shown you how to engrave stainless steel servers. I've also worked with Jennifer Maker on a tutorial on how to engrave cookie spatulas over Christmas time. That was a really fun one. That was a guest post over on her blog if you haven't seen it. And then she made a video on it, which was really, really good. And then um, I also have to you today how to engrave cheese spreaders. And I thought what we do is just kind of max out and see how many things we can engrave on. And so the spreader seemed to be like the next logical choice. So when I was looking online, I found out that spreaders are actually pretty much like cheese spreaders are the same as jam spreaders, which are the same as bread spreaders, butter spreaders, and Nutella spreaders, and peanut butter spreaders. So there's like a lot of options for what you can do with spreaders. But I thought what would be really fun for the designs today, because I wanted to give you a couple of designs, because I do, just to kind of walk you through and show you how to do this. Um, I thought it'd be fun to do some cheesy cheese scenes. So that is what I have for you today. And so if you go out over to my blog at wellcraftedstudio.com, we'll get started and grab those two designs and then we'll bring them on over to Cricut Design Space. Okay, we're here at wellcraftedstudio.com, which is my blog, and you go right to the library. And actually, actually I have that up. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna take you to my resource library where I've got tons and tons of free stuff now. And if you come all the way down here past the things, you'll see cheesy cheese scenes. And so you just want to click on those and then that'll take you to this and we're going to save this onto our computer and then we're going to go over to Cricut Design Space and upload it. So I'm just going to show you guys quickly how to do this. So to upload, you do the upload down here and that takes you to the uploaded images page. Click on that, click on browse and we're going to be importing the Cheese Sains PNG. It's going to be moderately complex because there's some smaller areas it could be kind of simple I'm not sure but we'll do moderately complex the checkered background here means that this is transparent so whenever you see that checkered background you know that that's actually just it's there's nothing there there's no white no nothing it's just clear so when we imported this it came in with that transparent background how many times can I say transparent background <laughs> um, but so that makes this a very simple easy one to see so because this is hand done though, I, I hand drew it in Procreate. Um, sometimes I'll have a stray pencil mark, so I'm just gonna click off once on the background to clean that up just in case, and then do continue. So Cricut's giving us the option of saving it as a print then cut image or as a cut image, and we want the cut image. So we're gonna click on this and that puts that green border around it, and then down here to save. And there we go. So it's ready to be uploaded. I actually have another set of cheese scenes here. Just do this. Oh, and there they are. So I had a few more designs, but rather than like walk you through how to do all of these, I just picked two of those that I thought were kind of cute and that would be fun to work with. But I will have these other ones available for you guys as well over on in my shop, actually. Okay, so we've got our two designs and right now I, they're connected. And I know that I want them separate, so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and grab a shape. Here we are. So I'm just going to grab a square, and I'm going to cover up one of those two parts to it. And then I'm going to select both images, so the rectangle and the, the image cut images. And then I'm going to come down here to slice. And slice only works, I found out, if you have two things at a time. So you can't do like three things in slice or four things in slice. But if you have two images, you know, one the shape and one something else, then you can go ahead and slice. And so what that did is it took it right out of there and it gave us two copies of this. We only need one, but now we have this piece and this piece are separate. So we can move them around separately on our, on our um, canvas. We can also size them separately if we'd like, but I know that from doing some testing on my servers, or sorry, spreaders, that these are gonna work best if they're about 1.6 inches. So I'm just actually gonna go to both, oh, actually no, that did both of them. So let's change up here in size and do 1.6 on the width. And I'm gonna do the same up here, 1.6 inches. 
and they're really, really, really little. But what we can do is we can go ahead and come down to here and make it bigger and we can take a look. Now, we're not quite ready to go yet because we're going to be engraving these. So we need them to be engraving. So I'm going to come up here to the cut and come down to engrave. And they're, they're ready to engrave now. But in order to get a deeper engraving, there's a trick that we can do. And what I'm just going to do is um, select both of those again by dragging. Or you can come up here to the select all here. And you can see they're both grayed, so they're both selected. And I'm going to come up to the duplicate and hit that a couple times. So now we have, what, four sets of these two images. So I'm going to grab all of them. They're all grayed up. And I'm going to come up to Align at the top toolbar and then drop down a center. Oops, and that did not work because I was using different images. I do this so many times I kind of forgot that I was doing it wrong. All right, so what we want to do is we want to take all these like that. And we're going to highlight those. Oops, we don't want the Swiss me baby in there at all. Okay, so we're going to grab them like this. And then we're going to come down to center. And that's going to stack them. And so really what the Cricut's going to do is it's going to go and it's going to engrave four times over that same image. But we want to keep them all together like this, so we're going to have to come down here to attach. Ta-da! And then I'll repeat with these. Okay, so we've checked. They're both engraving. They're both ready to go. They're both stacked. And so we can go ahead and make these. So I'm going to come up here, click Make It. And then we're going to move over to our camera angle so you guys can see me set up the mat. Okay, so I'm getting ready to set up my mat here. You can see it here. I'm using the purple strong grip mat, and you definitely want that for the engraving. I'm going to be using some painter's tape. I've got my servers to engrave. I've got a couple different styles there. I've got a ruler just so I can kind of help me um, gauge where things are. And because I find that the little um, centimeter millimeters um, just really help me um, be more precise. And then a Sharpie just in case I wanted to mark where the center is and stuff. So the biggest thing to remember when you're engraving with um, on stainless steel or if you're engraving with something with a handle is that that handle itself is curved and can't go through the Cricut. Like no way, no how. It's just going to get stuck. And so in order to be able to engrave something that's flat like this but that has a handle, what we're going to do is we're going to put it right down at the very bottom of the mat and attach it. And then when Cricut feeds it through, it doesn't feed this last bit in so that it can keep kind of, you know, grabbing it and pushing it back and forth. And so if we leak, position our curved handle part at this line right here, which is about a half an inch from the bottom of your grid, um, so put that curved part there, then we're going to be able to engrave from here up. So Cricut will automatically position your design if you try to pull it down as far as you can to the bottom of the mat. I can show you here. There is a little border in red right here. And that's about a quarter inch mark and they will not let us pull anything any closer to the edge than that quarter inch mark. And so when you're thinking about what you want to engrave on, just be, pay attention and kind of pay, let's see, let's see. <laughs> pay attention and see that, and know that this curved part right here where it comes up, you're gonna to have to be able to put that half an inch behind and then there's an additional quarter inch that you're not gonna be able to engrave on. So if you look at that, that means that I'm really only going to be able to engrave this space right here and really not even the tip because of that. So there's probably what an inch and a half there that we can really engrave on. And so I think I measured it. I think it's about 1.6 inches is the biggest that we can use for that space. And then I think it was about a half an inch wide. So when you're working with your design, you want to keep that in mind if you're using the same stuff. If you found like say maybe some vintage um, servers or you found different servers that you want to use, then that's how you would figure out your design is you would go ahead and measure, keeping in, uh, keeping in mind that little bit that we can't actually engrave on. So yeah, all right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put these at the bottom. We're gonna try both of them. So I'm gonna line it up using the grid here so that I can help me be more precise. So I've got it, that bend my server spreader right here right at the black line 
and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I'm lined up against this um, I think it's the seven inch line nice everything's nice and lined up and now looking at this I'm not gonna be able to just like have my design forward any more than that five, uh, that 10 so when I position this over here you can see I do have some room there for that 10 so I think I will be just fine with this and then looking here we said it was gonna be at the 7 so it's right up against the 7 at the edge of it is and if I look here on the mat so my line I'm like right over that 14 right here so if I look here it looks like this isn't actually even straight That looks straight. Okay, so when I look, I want to make sure that I don't... I'm just kind of going back and forth a couple of times. So this ends right at the 14, which is right where I need it to be. And really, it kind of curves up here, so I might... Yeah, so my design is going to be from here to here. That'll be just fine. Okay, we're going to try it. And then I'm going to tape it down really, really good. Make sure everything's straight. And we don't want to engrave into the tape because that will gum up the engraver. But we definitely want the tape because there were a couple times when I was first testing this method where I wasn't taping it down quite enough and it did kind of the engraving tip because it is actually removing metal so it is actually digging into the metal. It kind of caught on one of my parts of my design and it kind of shifted the whole thing and it got jammed under there. And if you've never seen the little red light on your Cricut, um, <laughs> it's a complete warning, flashing, screaming. Um, so be happy if you haven't seen that one yet. But all I did was I turned it off and then I um, tried to unload the mat. I tried to pull things out just kind of as carefully as I could. But I, I did, I think I did unplug it as well. So yeah, there are lessons in what not to do. Okay, so we're gonna come down here. And really, seriously, this is so cool for me because when I did, was doing all this testing and stuff, um, it, it was just like right here in my house and nobody else was trying this yet. And so my husband and I were um, trying to figure out how we were gonna do something with a curved handle. And I was out here messing around with my, trying to figure it out and he was getting dressed. And then all of a sudden, like both of us thought of it at the exact same moment. And then, you know, to take it out a little, brainstorm try it out and then make a youtube video and then have as many people as we've had see that and try that and seeing it start to pop up in the forums and things has been really really fun just how an idea can start in just one spot at one table and then just go on to the world nowadays is pretty crazy okay so i'm looking here and i'm gonna have this one right at the five line so i think i'm gonna try this other Type of engrave so this one actually seemed like it was a little shorter here and because we have this tip right here like this I don't know I might need to go ahead and switch those two designs because this one's a little longer than this one so we'll go ahead like this and I don't want it right up against that line because that's where my thing the edge of my knife is all right, so I'm going to go ahead and position these, and then I'll come back to you, and you guys can see see me get started. Okay, so just to be, like, triple check where my everything is, I took my ruler, and I have the metric side here again, um, so that it lines up with the one and the one, so that I can look here, and just very, like, I could see right that the center of this really is that 13 and a half, as far as the centimeters goes. And so I can look on my screen and see the little numbers at the bottom. So this makes it really a lot um, easier to get like fairly more, you know, more precise with what I'm doing here. So I'm, even then there's always, um, I'm completely random. So there's always like the, the chance that I didn't do my math right or something, but having the visual, being able to check visually really does help me. So anyhow, we're going to go ahead and feed this in. And I went ahead and moved the star wheels all the way to the right because Cricut recommends that. I have my engraving, you can see here. 
my engraving tool in. It's marked with the 41. Just clicks in there. And I'm going to load my mat. And then, okay, so double check once more. See, it's just a lot of checking and double checking. So it says engrave. Everything looks right. And we're going to do continue. Okay, so it's going to have me set my material. Okay, so I've got material set to stainless steel. I'm going to go ahead and it says engraving tip is loaded. And then we're going to pass that go. So we're just going to let that engrave and I will sh show you guys what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so it's all done, but I could tell right away as I was going that I had been off in my guestimization precision because what happened is because of this curve right here is it did just go off. The design went off that edge just a little bit um, and it looks like it didn't have it completely squared either. And then over here, the same thing happened because of that curve. Um, the design did go off just a little bit. Um, so I'm looking here and when I was watching it, it didn't really go as far, far over as I thought it, I, I guess because this is so much flatter than this, I think I can move this up just a little bit more and not worry about the roller. So I'm going to give that another shot, but I wanted to show you guys, you know, that it does happen. Um, and then I'm going to come back and I'll have the right mes measurements for you and everything. I always try to make things as huge as possible so that it can be seen as well as possible. And then it kind of bites me sometimes and I have to go back and kind of size things down a little more. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so I've made some adjustments and I've done some testing. And so right here, actually, I don't know if you can tell from the shine, but I use this piece of aluminum to test the different sizes. And so I have two that were at 1.4 and one at one, two at 1 1.5. And they're really, as far as readability goes, I think they're both pretty good. And so I think what I'm going to do is just go with that 1.4 and then give that a shot. So we went from 1.6 to 1.4. <laughs> but um, anyways, and so because I know that um, I'm not going to be able to engrave on this first quarter inch, I was able to move my tape up. Because another little tr problem I thought I maybe noticed was that maybe it was shifting a little bit as it engraved. And so the, one of the ways is to make sure that this is actually really stuck to the mat. Make sure that you've taped enough places where this is actually going to be very secure. I'll maybe even put some more down here just to kind of double check and because we just don't want that moving on us and um, in fact I might just go ahead and I know I'm not gonna get this top ledge here so I'll just put a little bit there too because what happens is it gets it and then it kind of moves it over a little bit as it's engraving and we just don't want it to move and the other change that I've made is I did um, let's see if you guys can see these so there really isn't much of a bend in these, and I really like them. Um, they're a little more modern, but yet when I just, you know, kind of did a little testing, I mean, it does kind of stick, but not until it's like way up here. And so I think I was, I just kind of, I'm giving it a shot, but I moved them up just a little bit so that this line isn't completely at this line, but just a little bit above it. So we'll give that a shot and see what we think. All right. Continue. So I'll load my mat. Oh, and then the other thing, like change that I did is besides making it like super uber big so I can see it, was I made the or I put the designs right on that line instead of the knife right on that line. So the design I know is right on that line, so I moved the knife a little bit over to the right of it, so that I could make sure that that design is going to be on the knife and then if we look here I mean, it looks it looks like it's going to be done about here so I think I really think which is where this um, curve happens 
So I really think that this one's going to be, this is going to be the one. <laughs> All right, let's see. Product testing, here we go. And these are really inexpensive, guys, so. Although if it was, if I was doing this for product testing for a product, I would probably just do one of these knives at a time, just to save on the, the cost, just in case. But we're all in. All right, I'm gonna let her do her work and I'll get back to you. Okay, it's all done, so we're gonna unload the mat, but that is looking really, really good. If you guys can see that there. Looks really good. So that was the 1.4, so I think we're just gonna go ahead and recommend that. Of course, you guys are welcome to play with it all you want. Okay, so what I did there actually I shouldn't have done, I just rubbed it with my hand. Because this is engraving metal, um, those are little metal shavings, and what you wanna do before you actually touch them is just use the tape a little bit and just pick up some of those shavings. I mean, it probably is just fine, but better safe than sorry. And I don't know if you guys can see it because of the lighting, but I'll take pictures and put them on my blog um, and probably put them in the video as well. But it looks really, really good. I'm really excited about this. There you go. See that one maybe? Not sure. So what we did here, guys, is pretty amazing because the whole engraving of metal servers and things is, I mean, it was a lot easier with the pie server because it's, you know, big. And here we had the spatula and, you know, we did again, we had a much bigger surface to work with. And so shrinking those things down, getting the small thing, using text and still being able to read that text clearly, being able to get these little fine details on the center, like the little holes in the cheese is actually really an accomplishment. So if you guys like think about what you're doing here, I mean, it takes courage to go ahead and try something new. So I'm, I am again so thrilled that so many of you have joined me in this. So I will go ahead and take some pictures and I will post those um, freebie files up on the blog and you guys can hop on over and pick those up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this tutorial. And if you found it helpful, please like, comment, or subscribe below. And for more tutorials like this, visit wellcraftedstudio.com.